Hello, anyone. Uh, we are continuing explaining here the chapter 11 on supervised learning. That's we we were talking about principal component analysis and matrix completion. There are really good ways just to explore the data and get new features and features that explain better the, the reality of the data in general. Now we are going to study clustering. And we are going to explore uh, two techniques. Key means, key means clustering and hierarchical clustering. So clustering, it refers to a, to a broad set of techniques for finding subgroups of clusters in a data set. Some application could be to find new different unknown subtype of break cancer, perform market segmentation, identify a group of people who might be more likely to purchase a particular product. And here's the key means clustering. Key means clustering, we seek to, parti to partition the observations into a pre specific number of overlap overlapping a cluster scale. So, you, the algorithm just need you define how many clusters you want in your data, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, and he use his magic just to to set up the the groups based on numeric data. For this method, the main goal is to classify observation within cluster. We have ultra class similarity, low within cluster variations. So what they mean is that the distance. The average distance between all the observations in this cluster, they try to be the minimum. So the mathematical description, let's see onto the number of clusters, the number of cell containing indices for observations. And we explain that if you add all the clusters, you will get it with all the observations. No observation belongs to two clusters. And we do, we're trying to minimize the this function W. W represents the amount by which the observation within a cluster differs from each other. So we are trying to minimize the total distance for every observation. There are many possible ways to define this concept, but the most common choice involves a square Euclidean distance, which is sensitive to a flyer, a world better with Gaussian distributed features. And here is the specific function. Yeah, so it's taking the difference between each pair of observation between a, any feature in the data. And this symbol, Denotes the number of observations in the cluster. So we are taking like a mean of the distance. But the, uh, the, the Euclidean distance is not the only alternative. We have a, also, we can also use a correlations or Mahanta distance. So Euclidean, if you have two points, you have explain. You have one point here and one point here. The Korean distance would be a straight line, but Manhattan would be a line like this, with ninety degree line. Also, we have, I mean, so sec distance, word distance. And we can use one minus a correlation like the Pearson one, that may be the most common one, but there are also another correlation that we can use. Correlation is really useful when we want, for example, segment customers. If we have, for example, the observation two and observation three, they, they have a really similar shape. But the number is different. So if you use correlation 
Uh, it doesn't matter how much the number differs. They will say, oh, the customer, the observation two is really close to the observation three. The algorithm that key means cluster use is the NS1. It first uh, randomly assign a number from one to K to all the observations. So we have these points, then they apply by random all the classes to the to the to the points, and then they take the means. For each kind of cluster, compute the cluster center. So here we are computing the, the cluster center. The K cluster center is the vector of the feature means for the observations in the K cluster. So what that means, they, they take the mean of every feature. For example, you have 11 columns. S1, S2, and S3. You would take the mean of every observation, and that would be the centroid. Assign is observation to the cluster whose center is closest. So they, they talk, oh, this is closer to the yellow, this is closer to the uh, pink, and here is closer to the green. So in the next step, you will see the points different. And you repeat the process until any of the points change the color. So yeah, we can see how colors change, yellow, blue, then the centrals change again. And here, uh, the, the center doesn't change and will have any change for no interaction. So this is a, like a white process. You will be uh, changing the, the centers until the centers doesn't change. That, that's the method they use. So they saw attended will depend on the initial random cluster assignment of each observation, it's important to run algorithm multiple times, 20 to 20, from different random initial configuration, random stars, random seed, that one selects the solution with a smaller objective. So in this case, we can see, oh, this was one of the 10, but here we have the minimum error, and the same here, but even though the clusters change the color so this one was yellow but now the yellow is this one so what they want to say that they perform different process uh on to on to get the the, the smaller objective as we read on as the randomization doesn't assure that we are getting the the optimum minimum we are just picking a local minimum so we need to repeat the process sometimes in order to get a really good one minimum of the error. To perform kind means clustering, it means that uh, we need to convert any ordinary categorical variable into numeric because this algorithm just works for numeric data. Convert nom a nominal categorical variables to one hot encode, as we explained last, last week also, and a scale of variables because Unless that you use the correlations, uh, use the Euclidean distance, and scaling would be really important. Selecting the number of clusters. Yeah, that's a tricky, a tricky part. K is predetermined by external resource of knowledge. For example, if you are segmenting customer, you have four sellers and you want to assign one cluster to each seller, yeah, then the K would be four. By your process, maybe you just have four machines, so you can just create uh, two different, uh, four different campaigns. If that's not the case, uh, sometimes it's useful to take uh, M on the two uh, square root. Yeah, it does. You don't have any idea. You can use this as a start point to select the number of clusters. We also can use the elbow method. 
So we try to say the that we seen the error that we the difference between the clusters, and we try to see when the change really make an important reduction. This case seems like five because the like the reduction goes slower after that point, but but my someone could also take thirteen, and that's also okay. That's just a way just to start. So the process is compute the k means clustering for different numbers of k. So here we are exploring from one to twenty five. For each calculator, calculate the total within cluster sum of squares. That's our error. Plot the curve and locate the error plus generally considered as an indicator of the approximate number of clusters. Performing around means, so around medians. Is it it has the same algorithm steps of the key means, but uses the median rather than the mean to determine the center, making more robust to have flyers. As your data becomes more sparse to perform key means. A hierarchical closer becomes slow and ineffective. An alternative is to use lower distance, which applies a particular distance calculation that works well with each data type. A quantitative interval, range number Manhattan distance. Ordinary, so if you have an interval, you can use Manhattan distance. It's not normal. Ordinary, so you have one variables like one, two, three, four. Then the matter is that used with a spatial adjustment for ties. If nominal, uh, they, they use a really specific uh, a function defined by this thing and these parameters. And here we can use use the closer package. Uh, after selecting all the numeric variables, and uh, you can calculate the goal distance. A uh, closing large application, Clara. Uh, it uses the same algorithm to process span. However, instead of finding the me medians of the entire data set, it considers a small sample size apply the key means. Opa. So you have a really a big a data set. You also can use Clara to perform this analysis a little bit faster. And now let's go to hierarchical clustering. And it does require to define number, it doesn't require to define the number of clusters, that is a very good thing. It returns an attractive tree based representation, a dendrogram. It assumes that clusters are nested, but that isn't true. Key means clustering could be better. So, this assumption is that it's the same thing that allows to, to create the dendrogram, these three structures. Uh, sometimes, our cluster doesn't have a hierarchy. And that's important. So both methods could be, that depends on your data. One of the, those, those two performs better in your, your case. So you will need to, to check both before taking any conclusion for your specific data. So to understand how to interpret the dendrograms, we need to understand that if leaf represents an observation, so every little leaf in these dendrograms represent, represent an observation, similar to the groups of the observation, uh, similar groups of observation are, are lower in the tree. So if you go lower in these functions, uh, the more similar. So it's like 
these two observations are more uh, similar to, for example, this observation to this other one. We were seeing a little example, how we can check the similarity within observation with these other ones. Different groups, observation are near to the top of the tree, as I was explaining also. So the similar ones are in the leaves. And we go up to the tree, you will see a different groups with higher differences. The way of cook, that is the G variable, the way of the cook controls the number of clusters. And for example, here they select nine, so we end with two clusters. If they here select five, they end with three clusters. As that's, those are the lines that cross uh, this, this number. That's really similar to the K in the K clustering. Is that right? you are not selecting a specific number, okay? It depends really on your specific diagram. But really, yeah, you also need to select some kind of flexibility. To understand how to interpret the dendrogram, we can see that observation five and observation seven are really close to each other in this space. And we just have two variables uh, for explaining this data. And also two and one because they are in the lower level of the dendrogram. But observation nine is no more similar to observation two, that is to observation A five and seven. So you, if you're watching the nine here and you can see that the fusion happens here at this level, all the closer below, it doesn't matter if the, the, the two is just after the nine, they are in similar distance. They are far away of the nine. As we can see here, the two is really more far away than A, five and seven, even though it's closer here in the dendrogram. So we need to take consideration that. The closer observation happen in this way, but you have more subgroups after that level, other ones are at the same distance. So let's explain how this algorithm works for a bottom-up hierarchical clustering algorithm. So that means that this cluster was built from, from the bottom to the top. So they define first uh, all the leaves and then they create the clusters. The first step is defining the, the similarity measure between each of the observation like the Euclidean distance or correlation-based distance, as we explained before. Two, defining each of the end observation as a cluster. So they start assuming that each observation is a cluster. Then fusing the most similar two clusters and repeating their process until all the observations belong to one cluster, to one single cluster. That is this one, this line that you see here. So we start the process, step one, five and seven, all right. Then we go six and one, yeah, they are really close. And then we get A with five and seven. So this is a number and this is also a cluster. How they know that this is the next step? So to answer that, we need to define the link, the link cohesion. Uh, that's the measure that this similarity between two groups of observations. So now we are not just understanding the distance between one observation and another observation, and we need to understand the distance between groups. And we have several options. We can use the complete, the maximum interval clustering, record the largest distance, the largest this similarity between cluster A and B. It tends to produce more compact clusters. So yeah, you won't have too many closer with that, uh, with that metric. Then we can use the single, the minimal 
interclose the dis discriminality, record the smallest dissimilarity between closer A and B. So, for example, the, if we use the complete, we would say, oh, the distance between A and seven. That's the one that we want to minimize. But at the final, it will be closer to the A. And the, the single will, will calculate the distance between A and five. That's the one. The average, you will take both distance. Oh, the distance from A to seven is, is that one. The distance from A five to eight is that one. And they, after computing all the distance, they take the mean. And it varies a lot, <laughs> depending on the, your data. So it's no, then no, we don't know what to expect there. Like, I don't know, you need a complete or a single, yeah, you can take the average, that's the between of both. The centroid is not really recommended Like you go here and calculate, oh, the distance, the center between five and seven is this point. For example, this point. And of course, it is one, just one observation. You, 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 you take that and you calculate the distance between the, the A and that point, you know, with the center. But they explain in the book that it's not really recommend to use that distance as it have, it have difficulties to visualize or to interpret in their results as they have a software the inversions. I don't really get what they mean, but like, what I really understood that it's really a problem. It don't, they didn't even, even give an example of that distance. They didn't explain that it's constant use in genomics, but otherwise that yeah, you just need to take one of these three distance. Um, yeah, basically, uh, let's see a little bit of the lab. I'm gonna um, add that to my presentation. But uh, the, that, cro that closer intending is also think part of the base R. And I think here we are, closer intending means and hierarchical. Yeah, they are using the head close, they take the distance and use the method complete. And single, and then they just need to use the plot function to, to plot the dendrograms. And uh, it, it's really simple to, to run. So when you, you understand that both are, um, uh, key means and hierarchical are obtaining distance, you need really to understand what measure you, do you need and, was, and how many closer do you want to explore. I know you have any doubt or you want to review anything here. Uh, were you showing the lab uh, a little while ago because I think you were mentioning some functions. Uh, but we still we were still looking at the book. Well, your book. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I understand. I didn't share my whole screen. Uh, can you see now the book? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. So yeah, H plus is a base R function. And also, this uh, you can really compute this method just using base R, and you can have this. And also, you need to plot, and you will have the dendrograms. And they also could that true, and that's basically what we explore. You're just uh, these functions that you need to take in consideration to apply them and take advantage. And the other book that I was checking also explained a little bit more uh, about different techniques of clustering uh, in the dendrograms. The Agnes is a 
both bottom top agree and the Anna is a uh, uh, top to bottom one. So yeah, if you maybe check this chart, you you may be able to see the same uh, the same methodology. So here we can explain the distance between the features, and then they use the the same function, but they also using the cluster package. That's a really interesting one, and works really close to the basal function. And the end, and that's it. It's really easy. the 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 harder point is just to interpret them. As we don't have a measurement to select the number of cluster, yeah, that's a try and error process. But yeah, I, I would start with the complete one. Just like in my mind, I would use, I'm trying to use this method just to explore, to perform better than IDA. So I would, I would try to understand first fewer clusters than more clusters. I think that's it. Let me just type M.